Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. Lord, you deserve it. You deserve all of our praise, all of the honor, all glory belongs to you, O oh God. Today, Father, we just want to take a moment to say thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring about us and for us. Lord, there is none like you. There is none like you, Lord. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are above all. There is nothing or anything or anyone to be compared with you. You are God all by yourself. And today, O oh God, we praise you. We adore you. We lift you up. We magnify your holy name. Because, Lord, you are good. You are awesome. Everywhere we look, we see your mighty works and your wonderful acts, O oh God. The heavens declare your glory and the firmament showeth their handiwork. Everywhere we look, O oh God, you are there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for being a good, good Father. Thank you, Lord, for being faithful to us even when we are not faithful to you. Lord, we thank you. We will never take, oh God, your grace for granted. Help us never ever to do that. Lord, I praise you today. even as we gather in your presence like this another time I pray mighty God that you would overshadow us you'd speak to us you would speak to our lives in a special way a brand new way Lord we invite you we invite you in our midst by your Holy Spirit oh God move across even the airwaves and bless your people even now Lord, I thank you for working on their behalf, on my behalf. You work behind the scenes, oh God, and you fix things. You fix those things that we ourselves didn't even realize need fixing, but because of your love for us. So Lord, I thank you now. And I pray that your word today will take root in our hearts and cause that change and transformation to take place. Lord, that's what we need. That's what we desire. We desire change. So Lord, take charge of the airwaves and let your word today go forth with power, with anointing, and with clarity. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Good morning. Good morning, friends. Good morning. This is Diane. And I'm coming to you today with a word of encouragement. I am coming to you today with a word from, from the Lord. A word from His word that I truly believe will strengthen your life, even mine. I do believe that after today you will feel encouraged and you'll be motivated to carry on for Christ, to continue running this race that is set before us, which is not for the swift, but is for those who will endure to the very end. It is not a sprint, friends, it's a marathon. We're in this for the long run. We're in this knowing that the Lord is with us 
every move that we make. We have to believe that, friends. Otherwise, our living would be in vain because the word of God says, if it was only in this life that we had hope, we would be men and women most miserable. There has to be something that we're working towards. There has to be a prize somewhere. Let us run this race, friends. Let's not get off the trail that the Lord has set before us because he's sovereign. He knows what's best for us. He knows those things that come into our lives that are a little bit uncomfortable at times. They're good for us because he knows how to work all things together for the good of those who love him and those who are called according to his purpose. Some of the things we do not understand, but we are in the will of God, especially when we allow him to lead us. So let's not give up. Let's not get off the track because things get a little hard remember that the adversary is there to oppose you he's there to throw obstacles in your way sometimes we say life throws us curveballs it's things that we just never saw coming we never signed up for we did not ask for but they come and they try to knock us off course and some people fall at that level but hey even if you do get up get up brush off and go again do not give up do not give the adversary the satisfaction of knocking you down and keeping you down no friends no friends he's doing his job it's about time that we do ours and that is to hold on to God's unchanging hand. We have to trust God in the process, friends. We have to trust him. Yes, there are some things that we do not understand. We just do not get it. Some are facing difficulties right now. And when they thought things were about to improve a bit, something else happens on top of what they were already facing. And they question God. They say, Lord, what did I do to deserve this? What have I done? And all I can say to that is, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he will strengthen you. Thank you, Lord. Today, we're being reminded that our lives are precious. And it's a precious gift from God. Our lives it's, it's, it's precious. Some, some people do not understand. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some people do not understand, friends, you know, how precious they are to God, even in the midst of trial and trouble. Some people equate trials and troubles to God not loving them anymore, God not caring about them anymore. They say, God, where are you? Where are you? And I would like to submit to you today that he's right there. He's right there. Listen to this. Your life is a precious gift from me. Open your hands and your heart to receive this day gratefully. Relate to me as your savior and friend. But remember, I am also your creator, God. All things were created by me. As you go through this day that I've gifted to you, look for signs of my abiding presence. I am with you, watching over you continually. On bright, joyful days, speak to me about the pleasures I provide. As you thank me for them, your joy will expand abundantly. On dark, difficult days, Grasp my hand in trusting dependence. I will help you, beloved. Your physical life is an amazing gift, but your spiritual life is a treasure of infinite value. People who don't know me as Savior 
will spend an eternity in terrible separation from me. But because you belong to me, you will live with me forever, enjoying a glorified body that will never get sick or tired. Since I have saved you by grace through faith, let thankfulness for this indescribable gift fill you with overflowing joy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, friends, today is Friday, the 13th day of September 2019. And you know, growing up, we used to hear that Friday the 13th is not a good day. It's a day that's associated with bad luck and horror and all of this stuff. I mean, we, the people of God, know better. We don't subscribe to those beliefs. I choose, friends, when this day rolls around, knowing all of the stuff that's out there, that people say about this day, I choose to give God thanks. I choose to praise Him. You know, I, I don't focus on what they say Friday the 13th is all about. I focus on the blessings of the Lord and the ways that He has blessed my life and growing up, even coming up. I used to see some stuff like, for example, I remember one Friday the, thir the 13th, I was on my way to school. Um, I was still in primary school and I saw a very gruesome sight, gruesome for a child. It was really animals. Um, <laughs> there were some goats, uh, like the neighbor had some goats and the area was fenced. But apparently a part of the fence, fencing was breached by dogs. And they went in there and they mauled the people's goats and it was a terrible sight. I think that was maybe the most gruesome thing I've ever seen in my life, ever. You know, and I remember that being Friday the 13th. And I thought to myself as a child, no wonder they say this day is a day that's filled with you know, negative things, bad things. But as I grew up and I started to understand who God is, because, you know, I told you all I got saved at age 10. I mean, I walked away later on and then the Lord had to, you know, pull me back. But as I grew in the Lord, I got to realize that life is not about chance and luck and those types of things some people believe in that some people cannot leave their homes unless they have listened to or read their horoscope and i don't know why somebody would want to read something called a horoscope that's pure horror to me it may sound good and may sound like good guidance but sometimes these things are so generalized but our god friends he's direct and when he speaks a word to you, it's for you. It's not for somebody else. It's for you. Your life is a gift from God. Whether you think your life is perfect or it could use some sort of thing, remember that your life is a gift from God. There are some people who are blessed just to be even alive just to be breathing some of them are you know hold up on a hospital bed but they're happy to still be here and then there are the rest of us who are able to move about freely and we're not grateful we don't give god thanks enough we start to count other people's blessings instead of our own but what if we could start seriously counting our blessings so every single time we feel the urge to complain because, you know, the neighbor's car is the latest model and the one we have is a beat up old Chevy. I'm, I'm just saying. Before we spend that time just giving God thanks that he has blessed us with something to even drive. Some people are walking. Some people can't even drive, but would love to be able to. I'm saying, friends, 
it's all about perspective, giving God thanks for even the smallest or what we consider small, small blessings. Because you see, the Lord being our creator, he knows exactly what we need. He knows what we need and sometimes we do not have because we do not ask. But then what is our motive for asking? Are we asking amiss? Are we asking with the wrong motives? Let's check some of that. All right, so let's read this. Colossians 1 verse 16. It says, For through him God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. One of the things we always have to remember, friends, it's that the adversary, Satan, the devil, he's not the only one, you know, with powers and so on in the unseen world. Sometimes when we speak of these things, we let it sound as if, you know, God has no control over these things. But we have to remember that the Lord rules and reigns over it all. He is sovereign. There is nothing that goes on in the world that slips by God. All right? We have to remember that. Even when we talk about God's permissive will, where, you know, there are some things that he allows we still have to understand that it's not because he's out of control. He is in control of our very lives. So we have to always remember that nothing happens by chance, not even in our own lives. It's not random. It's not coincidental. We use those terms at times. But the Lord, he is very specific. He's very direct. He's also very strategic. And there are some things that he allows to happen years before they, they have real meaning in your life, like presently. You know, I see what the Lord is doing. Even in my life right now, he is reconnecting me to people that he allowed me to meet in the past, which at the time, I did not realize the significance. But now, Everything is just opening up. So friends, these experiences that you're having in your life, I mean, whatever it is, just know that God is in control. He's in charge. All right? Everything was created through him and for him. Our God, friends, is the creator. He's the creator of life. Sometimes persons find that they are not in ideal situations and they say you know I, I i can't see how any of this has to do with god i i don't see it you know sometimes even some women like myself got pregnant out of wedlock and it would have been a difficult time because you know you have to deal with that situation yourself and then you have to deal with you know the criticisms and all of that that came with the territory but if it's one thing I learned from that experience is that only God can create can create life and the fact that he allowed that child to live you know it, it it says to me that what sometimes we believe that we understand and we can put a handle to it. No, it's God. So friends, do not despise those things that happen in your life that seems out of place. Some people say, and this has been an ongoing you know, topic now. I, I post questions here on Facebook and I've been speaking to people and it's about people who are just not functioning or not happy or not joyful 
in their unions, in their marriages. And I, I look at it and I say, you know, these are Christian people who, the day they walked down the aisle and they said, I do to each other. I mean, I've never been to a wedding where any one of them said, I don't. And that ceremony continued because both had to agree. Yes, people get married for different reasons. Yes, you know, one lady was so open in one of our uh, discussions where she said, look, I married to stop shacking. You know, so she said it open right there. So I know she feels like she's in the wrong family. And I'm saying friends, there are so many things that trouble our lives. I have people who are separated from their spouses, like mainly women, right? Separated, they love their spouses, but somebody else and something else came in and created that wedge. And they, they're crying out and they're asking the Lord for restoration because they still love their spouse. But something is, you know, keeping their attention elsewhere. Some of it is clearly demonic. Clearly, clearly. You know, sometimes we like to, um, <laughs> you know, over-spiritualize everything where we don't even see things anymore for what they are. But I'm saying this gift of life that we have sometimes is filled with trouble and it causes some to doubt if God really, really still loves them or if he cares, if he cares about what they're facing. And I'm saying, yes, he is right there. And what I've been sharing with some of the women is basically hanging there with God because this that you're facing is not beneath his radar. He's seeing it. He's seeing it all. And he understands the hurt and the pain that you feel, the loneliness. Some talk about being lonely. Being lonely because they're accustomed to having somebody there as a companion. And, and that, I mean, that's a good reason to get married, you know, for companionship. It's, it's a lot of different good things. And then when that is no longer the case, then people feel as if, you know, the Lord has left them. But I'm here to remind somebody that that is not true. Isaiah 41, 13 says, For I hold you by your right hand. The right hand signifies strength. I, the Lord, your God, and I say to you, don't be afraid. I am here to help you. Friends, cry out to God. Ask him to come into your lives and come into your situations. Don't be afraid to, to ask the Lord to invade your circumstances. You see, some of us are afraid to say, Lord, let your will be done because we have our own will. And anything that goes separate or aside from what we want, is troubling to us it makes us fearful but friends do not be afraid to say to the Lord Lord let your perfect will be done in my life I yield and submit myself to you and what you want to do when we give God the reins friends when we give God the reins yes sometimes we're gonna go through some stuff but we can trust God. He's trustworthy. All right? He's trustworthy. The Lord saved us. The Lord saved us. He saved us by His grace when we believed. He saved us through faith. That's what Ephesians 2.8 is saying. God saved you by His grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Listen, friends, the fact that the Lord accepted you says to me that there is something about you, about your life, about my life with God. 
And we have to trust him. Trust him when things are up. Trust him when they're down. Trust him when they're fighting you on the job. Trust him even when they're fighting you in the church. Trust God when you're unhappy at home because something is out of alignment. You have to trust God. Look to him. Rely on him. There are going to be some things that you must do. Yes. And he will instruct you. He will guide you. And, you know, when you're in doubt and you're not sure, just trust God. Say, okay, Father, I'm not moving until I hear your next direction. To me, that's even better than trying to go out on your own and trying to guess. I wonder if this is what God wants me to do. Because some, so many people are confused. Listen, if I get into any confusing situation, friends, I just stop. I I stop. I, I don't move at all. I say, Lord, speak to me. I'm listening. And I'm waiting. And listen, when you have a relationship with him, you will know when he's speaking to you. Either he will send somebody to answer that question that you have, or he'll cause some other circumstance to take place. And you will know that he's speaking. So for all those now who are having all manner of situations that, you know, they're saying, okay, God, I'm hearing what Sister Diane is saying, but this has been going on for so long. What can change about this? Listen, you cannot be double-minded. If you're going to believe God, you're going to believe God. The two cannot work. Two cannot work. Right? All right, I'm going to go off on a tangent right now just to make a little point. I used to work at a law firm and my boss at the time, well, he's passed away now, was a very good lawyer. Not just in my opinion. I mean, he was renowned throughout the courts here in the Virgin Islands. And he did murder cases, all type of stuff. You know, people just come to him as a very good defense lawyer. And there was a particular case. And I'm not going into any detail, detail. I'm just skimming the surface so you could get the point. There was a particular case that several people, listen to this, several people were uh, charged for the murder of this person and he got some of them to defend and other lawyers got some because they were all friends you know they were all friends and of course everybody had their own story or their own account of where they were and you know it wasn't them and everybody you know uh, said they're innocent and what was interesting about the whole scenario is these two say, look, we were together and this is what we were doing. Another one said I was by myself and this is what I was doing. Another one said I was by myself, this is what I was doing. But this is it. The accounts were so different, yet all were charged for this one person's murder. And then it became quite clear, you know, from time to time we would see what the, how the case was going, who was saying what, what was happening. Some of it was in the media. And then it, it just, <laughs> it dawned on everybody. I mean, come on, all these scenarios cannot be correct. You know, you, you can't, it's either all of them did it, how they did it, only God knows. Or none of them did it. Or two of them did it, or one of them did it. But whatever it was, all of those scenarios, when you put them together, it, it cannot work. It cannot, it, it couldn't hold. Well, long and short of the story, those that my former boss represented, they were exonerated. Because I think in part of the evidence, there was something that showed with a timestamp, date and timestamp. I think it was an ATM receipt or something like that. 
that showed exactly where they were, right? The time they were there. And they realized from their investigations, there is no way these could have done it. So I'm saying all of that to say this. When you have a situation that it's tempting you or driving you to doubt or believe, doubt or believe, those two situations cannot work in that to get the right outcome. It can, it's either one or the other. It's either one or the other. So it's either, friends, you are going to believe God and know that he's going to work everything out for you or you're going to doubt and then sit back and expect the worst. But you must make up your mind. You cannot be wishy-washy. Because remember, the word of God says a double-minded man will not get one thing from the Lord. So let today, this Friday the 13th day of September 2019, be the day when you say to the Lord, Lord, I have been battling with this situation for too long. And this is the day that I'm ready, totally ready to give it over to you completely. And after you have done that, friends, do not, I mean, resist every urge to pick it up back again. Do not touch it anymore. That's so difficult for us to do. Just leave it in God's hands. I'm not saying you're not praying about it. Continue to pray. But don't go and, you know, start get all entangled in what the devil is doing all over again. No, trust God. Because I'm telling you, he's a fixer and he will fix that situation. If you're at work and you're having some troubling situations, be it with the boss, the supervisor, co-worker, whoever, pray and watch God work. I'm telling you, our God is not a, a, a fairy tale God, okay? He is real and he acts on his children's behalf. All he wants us to do is to cry out to him. You set that situation before God and watch and see if he would not bring a solution. He may keep you there for a little bit to strengthen you because after you come out of that, it will surprise even you how much you have grown how much you have grown. All right? So you trust God with that. You put it before him. Neighbor bothering you, put it before the Lord and watch him act. Folks lying on you, scandalizing your name, put it before God and watch him vindicate you right in front of their faces. Oh yes, I've been there. Been there. So when something arises now, I laugh. I laugh. I say, hmm, you all have no idea who you're messing with. And I'm not even saying it from a perspective of trouble me and say if I wouldn't, you know, defend myself. Uh-uh. I learn that the biggest defender is God. I've shared it with you all that I used to get upset when people say to me, leave it in God's hands. He will take it. Listen, that thing used to upset me so bad. I'll be very honest. It's like, what kind of passive thing this they, they're talking about? Leave it in God's hand. This is something that I need to defend. I need to set the record straight. They're telling lies. I need, uh-uh. Listen, friends. Listen, the longer I stayed in that pattern, the longer that situation carried on. And I said, okay, let me try it God's way. And the moment I relinquished where I started to look like a fool, God took over. And he said, all right, now you're ready to do things my way. Stand back now and watch the result. And I'm telling you, when I talk about vindication, huh, <laughs> if you all could take a dictionary and look what vindication means, you would understand. And when I see how God work. I said, okay then. So next time, so you see, you learn. You learn, friends. You learn from the things that 
you learn from <laughs> like seriously you learn you learn to trust God more you learn to leave things in his capable hands you learn do not worry yourself stop setting up your blood pressure right relax in God it yes it looks like you're a sitting duck but I'm telling you when God comes through for you you are gonna be like a giant when first you were like a midget just allow God to act on your behalf and he will fix the thing for good. Sometimes he removes the obstacles. I mean, seriously, like after you have had your, you know, your lessons and he feels okay, <laughs> then and only then, you know, he removes it. And he said, all right, you learn now how to respond to things of this nature. So that's why I could tell you, over time, I mean, my personality is the same, but over time, there are some things that just absolutely do not get my attention anymore. Like seriously, it's like non-entity. Nope, no devil, you will not draw me out today. I see what you're doing. There's nothing like actually seeing it come in, so you prepare for it. You ever see sometimes, you know, some people come and they're raging mad. No wonder the Bible says a soft answer turn it away wrath. And because you know if you should carry on in like manner, what's going to happen? You make a decision. You, you make the decision, not them. That, hey, I'm not going to respond how they expect me to respond. Because that's what start fires. And they come and they carry on and you just listen and you make them talk and them quarrel and them go on and you just relax. And when them done, you say you're done. And them say, yeah, and you done too. You don't have a thing to say. Just let God handle it. Sometimes that frustrates the devil even more. But you let the Lord handle some of these things. And when he vindicates you, you will give him the praise and the glory. All right. So for somebody now, right now as I'm speaking, that is facing a very tough situation, God knows what it is. I'm going to pray and I'm going to say, Father, you know, help your people. Because after a while, some people do feel like, you know, I could only take so much. And the Lord has promised that he would not give us more than we can bear. So. Believe God now. Believe that he is able. And watch and see if he wouldn't turn the situation around. Just believe. Believe God. Believe God. Choose to believe God. You have nothing to lose. Go out on a limb with God. With this. And watch. And come back and testify. After he has done it. Testify. All right. Because he, God, will get the glory. Remember, your life is a gift. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you today. We bless your holy name. We glorify your name, O oh God, because we realize that you are sovereign. You are Lord. You are King. You are over all. You are above all. You sit high and you look low. You see everything, oh God, that your people are facing at this time. Some are facing difficulties in their marriages. Lord, I pray that you would intervene in such a way that they will know, oh God, that it is you. Lord, I thank you for the gift of marriage. I thank you, Lord, for the gift of a union when a man and a woman can come together and serve you together and watch their lives flourish. But Lord, there are times when the adversary creeps in there are times when some are led away by their own lust and their own evil desires. But I'm saying, God, have mercy. Have mercy on these families who are 
suffering because of separation, because of third parties, other people involved in the marriage who should not be there. Could be a stranger, could even be a family member. Lord, I pray right now for your divine intervention. Let your perfect will be done in their lives, O oh God. Use this situation, these situations that they're facing to draw them closer to you. Because Lord, sometimes things happen when you're trying to get our attention. We were on our own way, just doing our own thing. Lord, I thank you now that you're even healing hearts and mending hurts. So many are hurting because of the separation. So many are lonely. So many, oh God, feel neglected and unloved and abused in different ways. And they're saying, Lord, could this be from you? But Lord, I pray that your will will be done and they will see you even in the midst of the madness. They will see you, Father. They will see your hand working on their behalf. And Lord, restore those, O oh God, who desire such, who seek such. Restore them, O oh God. Restore unto them that love, that understanding, that level of communication that makes marriages work, that restore to them even that godly life because some have drifted away from you, O oh God. Draw them back. Draw them back into fellowship with you, and then and only then, Lord, they would have that fellowship together. So Lord, let your will be done in these situations. Lord, protect the children who are involved, the young ones, those who are being affected the most. Cover them, Lord, and let them not grow up being dysfunctional because of what they went through with their parents. So Lord, I ask you now for a peace to come to homes that are in turmoil. Even now, Lord, as they lift their faith to you and say, Father, we believe, let it be, Lord. Let it be according to your will. Lord, even those now who are facing difficulties at work, where they feel, oh God, like, why am I here? It's time to move on. But Lord, you are saying in your divine will for them, wait, hold on. I will fix it. Lord, I pray that they will see your will at work. They will see your hand. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. They will see and they will know that they're not serving you in vain. That you have the power, O oh God, to affect outcomes. That nothing happens by chance. They're not working there by chance. It's not luck that caused them to get that job. But you have strategically placed them there for such a time as this. And only when you give the green light, they will go. So Lord, I pray right now, even for those whom you are ready to have them move on, Lord, I pray that they will see the door that you have opened for them and all confusion, all chaos will leave their minds as you give them clarity. And they will make that decision, oh God, to walk through the door that you have opened for them. Lord, bless your people. 
and cause them to be a blessing to others. Lord, those who are in jail, those who are in prison, those who have relatives in prison, I pray, oh God, that you would comfort them, you would bring favor to their lives, oh God. For so many different reasons they're there. But Lord, I pray for the families who are supporting them even beyond what was expected. I pray, oh God, that you would continue to speak to their hearts so that they would love their loved ones even though they're in prison. Lord, some mistakes carry certain consequences. And I pray, God, that those who are innocent, Lord, you would set them free. And those who are not innocent, oh God, you will have mercy. Mercy, oh God, mercy. So Lord, I thank you now that you're shifting things and you're turning things. And you're helping your people to see you in the midst of their circumstances. Lord, let lives be changed. Let lives be transformed. Let lives turn around as a result of all of the things that they're going through, Lord. As you get their attention. Lord, I continue to lift up and pray for the people of the Bahamas who are facing another storm, even as we speak, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. A people who are already broken and battered, Lord. I pray that they would turn to you with urgency, all peoples, oh God. Because I do believe that you're speaking to us, everybody. You're speaking to the nations. So I pray, God, that us as individuals, especially those who are called by your name, will truly humble ourselves and seek you, O oh God, and turn away from evil so that you would hear us and you would help us. So Lord, help the people right now who are suffering, those who are dying, oh God, send help, send relief. Lord, it's not your will that anyone should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Let the rest of us, oh God, repent once we have life, once we have blood flowing through our veins. Cause us, oh God, to turn to you all the time, not just when calamity is upon us or when a storm is predicted, oh God. Help us to remember you in all aspects of our lives. Those of us who have become so materialistic, oh God, it's just a moment. Just one moment can change everything. So help us to get our priorities right. And that is our soul, our soul, our soul. Help us to get our hearts and our soul right with you, O oh God. That's the most important thing. Things will come, things will go. But that relationship we have with you stands forever. Come what me. So Lord, cover your people. We're still navigating through this hurricane season. And Lord, you have been calling the nations. Help us to heed your voice, to heed your warnings, and to take heed before it's too late. Thank you, God. Bless your people, O oh God. Help us to hear you. Thank you, Lord. As you have told us today that our lives are a gift from you. Lord, help us to see it that way. And we would live that life for you. Thank you, Father. That's my prayer today. That we would seek you now more than ever before. Yes, Lord. 
and then the blessings that we're seeking will come. Because you said, seek you first and all of your righteousness and everything else will be added to our lives. So help us to keep that in the forefront of our minds always. And not just to say it or repeat it, but to live it. So I thank you now, God, for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you are about to do in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Friends, listen. We're living in perilous times. Serious times. It's evident. When you look around and you see all that's taking place, you know that things have changed. Things are not the way they used to be. We are now facing physical storms, spiritual storms, all types of storms. But the answer through whatever storm it is, is Jesus. Jesus is the answer. So for those of us who name the name of Christ and every now and then we just do our own thing, go our own way and it's like the Lord has no say in our lives. Let's be so careful in this season. Let's be so careful. The Lord loves us. He cares about us and he has promised to protect the righteous, right? But let's not take his grace for granted. The Bahamas just faced terrible devastation. And now more storms are headed that way. Headed this way too, Virgin Islands. Headed towards the west. They're all over. The storms are all over. Some of them are popping up here, popping up there. It's like, the, it's like a, a friend of mine describes it as the tropics looking, lighting up like a Christmas tree. Everywhere you look, there is a storm on the radar. We cannot afford to just live our lives anyhow anymore, friends. We have heard of earthquakes and tsunamis that the Lord has used his messengers, his prophets to warn people about famine. These things are coming, friends. We cannot stress it enough. We cannot pray them away because we feel that, you know, a good God wouldn't do this and he wouldn't do that. I remember in 2017, right after Hurricane Irma passed, and there were certain declarations that were being made and, you know, the Lord just continued to warn and warn the BVI. And then you had Maria. Then Maria came and added to what Irma had done and you still had people after that come out and say, a good God wouldn't hit us again. Really? Listen, friends, let's not fool ourselves. If we're continuing in our wickedness, there is no telling what's next. All right? Let us change our ways and look to God because he's calling for repentance. There are governments right now who have no idea what to do next because they never expected certain levels of devastation. It seems to me like when devastation happens in a country, no leader is truly prepared to handle the aftermath. You know, we see it all the time, total devastation and everybody trying to, you know, tell the leaders what to do and how to do it. When they themselves are in total shock because they never see anything like that, and that's what I'm saying, friends. All of us have to look to God in this time. He's warning us. He's warning the Caribbean. He's warning the USA. He's warning all over. Let us not turn deaf ears or a blind eye. Let us seek to repent before the Lord. Put away evil. Put away the, the stuff that we think are hidden 
But the Lord is seeing it, the plots of wickedness to kill and hurt people. People we don't like, people we, I can't stand she, I can't stand him. Let the Lord come and find you in that situation and see. You understand, it's not his will that any should perish. So let's turn away from all of that nonsense. Fighting here and there over foolishness. Right? Let's put away those things. Put away those things. Some say, well, you know, yeah, that's true, but, you know, you have some people that I just don't like. And, <laughs> listen, friends, if some of us even knew what was at our doorsteps at times, we would put it away before what happens happens. Because after a storm, everybody wants to come together. Because they realize that if you don't stand together then, then you're going to perish together. So why, why can't we stand before the storm? Why does it take a storm and turmoil and death and the stench of death and crying and frustrations? I mean, everybody's frustrated. You know, nowadays, one way or the other, something is frustrating. But let us look to God, friends. He has all the answers that we seek. From government right down to the common man. Some of these governments, they need, those, especially those who are not Christians, they need spiritual advisors, godly people to advise them. Because some simply just don't know what to do. And when devastation comes, it makes it worse. All right? There are many people involved in a lot of these organizations that are shrouded in secrecy and shrouded in all sorts of things that do not please God. And these are the means by which some are running countries, trying to have control in areas that only God should have control, manipulating people, manipulating outcomes, trying to run things as if they're God. Well, the Lord has been cutting down the demigods. He has been bringing exposure. The Lord is cleaning up churches and he's cleaning up nations. When the messengers of God spoke about a cleansing coming, a washing out, and a shaking and a tearing down, people thought it was a joke. They, they, they mocked, they scorned, they said terrible things about God's genuine messengers. And now that it's all happening before our very eyes, you'd think that people would turn to God, right? In the midst of it, some are still wicked. Still wicked. So why do we question these things? Why do we? The Lord knows. He sees what we don't see. He sees what we don't see. And I take comfort in that. I rest in that. I rest in that. I rest in knowing that the Lord is sovereign and there are some things that we may not understand, but he does. And sometimes we look on with eyes of sympathy and we should because we're human. It's a part of our emotions. Our emotions respond to grief and sorrow and sadness. Well, I guess there are some people who cold hearted. They can't respond to even that. But I'm saying the Lord is seeing the, the secrets, the things that some believe are hidden. And he's saying, it's like when Achan hid that Babylonian, the Babylonian garment in his tent. And so many people died as a result of his sin. So I'm saying, friends, this is not the time to play or even to condone wrong. And we see wrong and we become a part of it. No, the Lord is not pleased with those things. And he's cleaning up. He's cleaning up his church. He's cleaning up the nations. What more has to happen for us to turn to God? How many more storms has to blow? You understand? So let us take an individual stand to stay close to God and he will protect and take care of his people even in the midst of turmoil 
All right. May the Lord bless you all today. TGIF. Some say, thank God it's Friday. But I love to say, thank God I'm free. And today, God is first. Put him first in your life every single day, every moment, because you don't know what's in the, the next one. Trust God. All right? Trust God. And he will take you through. So enjoy your weekend. Go on out to church. Be a part of the family of God. Fellowship. Pray. Repent. All right? Let's just stay with God. And he will take care of us. So until next time, friends, take care.